In the fourth year of his marriage to Song Yun, he remembered everyone but forgot me. What's worse is that I have cancer and am dying. In the six months I have left, I gave him to her with my own hands. On the day of our wedding, I left him forever in the place he loved me the most. A knock on the door woke me from my dream. I subconsciously wanted to tell Song Yun to go answer the door, but then I realized that he had already got up. I heard the sound of water running and reluctantly went to open the door. When I opened the door I saw the delivery boy, holding a huge bouquet of white roses in his hands. After thanking the delivery boy, I took the flowers into the house with a puzzled look on my face. After a few steps, I bumped into a strong chest, and the whole person was instantly surrounded by the fresh fragrance of pine trees after snow. I nudged him, and he hugged me even tighter. I asked in a low voice, Is today a special day? Why are you giving me flowers? Madam, don't you remember? Today is our fourth wedding anniversary. He gently ran his fingers along my shoulders. In the past few days, for some reason, I kept feeling dizzy for no reason and kept forgetting things. But fortunately, what I didn't remember, Song Yun still remembered. I put the flowers aside and turned to go to the kitchen to make breakfast. Song Yun embraced me from behind and whispered in my ear, What should we do, madam? Your husband doesn't want to go to work today. Today is the company's general meeting for the election of new management and Song Yun, as CEO, must be there. I turned my head and kissed his cheek, gently reassuring him, Your wife isn't going anywhere, so why are you still clinging to me like a child? Before leaving the house, Song Yun suddenly placed a light kiss between my lips, then gave me a satisfied smile, I'm off, my love. Just like countless mornings before. It was already 6 p.m. when I finished cooking dinner. As usual, Song Yun should have been home by now, but after waiting for another half hour, I still didn't see him. Suddenly the phone rang. I thought it was Song Yun calling, so I answered it anxiously and asked, Why haven't you come home yet? There was silence on the line for a moment, and then the voice of my best friend came through. Shang Shang, Song Yun had a car accident, but don't worry, he's out of danger. It's just that he seems to have lost his memory. I quickly drove to the hospital. The moment I opened the door, I froze. Lin Wanqiu, why was she here too? Song Yun was lying in the hospital bed, with multiple places on his body covered in gauze, some of which seemed to be bleeding nonstop. I grabbed his hand with pain in my heart. Yun, are you still uncomfortable? Song Yun's eyebrows furrowed slightly, Yun? Who allowed you to call me that? Lin Wanqiu pushed me away and then took Song Yun's arm, saying with righteous indignation, sister, just leave Yun alone, we're getting married. Lin Wanqiu wasn't very strong, but I still fell heavily to the ground. Then I fell into a coma, and before I lost consciousness, I seemed to see Song Yun's outstretched hand. I woke up again, already in the hospital bed. My best friend, Chu Shi, hurriedly poured a cup of warm water onto my hands when she saw me wake up. Her eyes were red as if she had cried. I patted her hand gently, she she, it's okay. Even if Song Yun forgets me, I can make him remember. Unexpectedly, she burst into tears again. Is that smelly man worth crying over? I'm worried about you. Me? What's wrong? I had a bad feeling in my heart. Chu she handed me a thin piece of paper with a diagnosis on it. I sighed after reading it. Brain cancer, I should have guessed. I looked at Chu Shi and asked calmly, How many days do I have? She lowered her head and didn't dare to look at me and whispered, It's already in the advanced stages at most six months. Chu Shi is a brain surgeon, and I believe what she says. Fortunately, I can still accompany Song Yun for half a year. I comforted myself. Chu Shi looked at me with a face of hatred and disappointment when she heard this. Song Yun's memory has stopped at five years ago. You are now a stranger to him. If you receive treatment now, maybe you can. She couldn't continue and left the ward in tears. It turned out that even Chu Shi, who was used to life and death, couldn't accept the fact that I was about to die. I looked at Chu Shi's back and whispered sorry, then tore up the diagnosis and threw it in the trash. When I returned to Song Yun's ward, I saw Song's parents standing outside the door, 
as if they had been waiting for me. Song Yun's parents and I had never gotten along, and now they had come to see me, they just wanted me to get a divorce. Song's mother forced a smile and told me, Shang Shang, I know you want Yun to remember you, but the shareholders' meeting was just held yesterday. If others find out about Yun's memory loss, the consequences will be unimaginable. Song's father added from the side, Recovering your memory is not something that can be done overnight. After this storm has passed, we'll go for treatment again. I hope you can stay out of Song Yun's sight these days. After the storm has passed, I'll have to leave too, right? I nodded, I understand. Then I looked around the hospital room and reluctantly left. When I got home, the house was dark. I turned on the lights and saw that dinner, which had long since cooled, was still on the table. I didn't eat a bite, poured the food into the trash and went to bed. How ridiculous, on the fourth anniversary of our wedding, my husband forgot who he was married to. I was used to the smell of Song Yun, and I had a hard time sleeping without him. I tossed and turned, unable to sleep. Seeing the white roses on the nightstand reminded me of the first time I met him five years ago. I was an orphan since childhood, but fortunately, I was raised by the director of the Welfare Institute. According to the director, I was picked up by her in Bay Huai. So when I was 22, I saved enough money and went to my birthplace, Bay Huai, to see my former hometown. Bay Huai is located inland, dominated by deserts sparsely populated, and the locals make a living from tourism. On the day I went, I met a strange man who used force I could not resist to pull my hair back. I thought I was going to be dragged into the bottomless darkness by this animal. But then Song Yun appeared. He immediately kicked the villain next to me over, and before the villain could launch an attack, he picked him up like a mouse and threw him to the ground. The villain knew he was no match for Song Yun, got up and tried to run, but Song Yun wanted to go after him but saw me shivering nearby. So he knelt down to comfort me and gently combed my messy hair. After that, I stuck to Song Yun all day, wanting to do something to thank him for saving my life. In the end, he couldn't stand me any longer and gave me a job as his assistant. After becoming his assistant, I often had to attend various social engagements with him. One day, after drinking too much, he told me about him and Lin Wanchio. They were supposed to get married, but Lin Wanchio received an invitation to train at a major theater abroad, and on the day of the wedding, the bride didn't show up. Song Yun and Lin Wanchio were married in a family alliance, and their relationship was not deep. However, Song Yun was also a well-known figure, and the bride running away on her wedding day was a great loss of face. He went to Bay Huai to escape the world because he didn't want to face the gossip. Unexpectedly, he saved me. He took my hand and told me that since I was young, he had tried his best to do everything perfectly, and only I cared about whether he was happy or not. After that day, Song Yun began to pursue me fervently. His parents could not keep this a secret, and his mother spoke to me, telling me that I would only be a burden to him. I saw Song Yun argue with his mother over me, and even go so far as to sever their relationship. I am an orphan, and I know how hard it is to grow up without parents. Although I like Song Yun very much, I don't want him to suffer this pain. But Song Yun still wouldn't give up. He proposed to me with 99 white roses. I refused him. Song Yun, you're like planting roses in the desert. It's futile. His eyes were resolute. Shang Shang, even if it's futile, I'm willing. In the end, Song Yun's mother couldn't persuade him, and we got married. To this day, I'm in the fifth year of liking him, and the fourth year of being married. Song Yun's car accident still couldn't be kept a secret. The next day, many shareholders withdrew their investments, and Song's capital chain broke. I was preparing some chicken soup, and was about to go to the hospital when I received a news feed. Shocked, the big star Lin Wanchio is actually Song Yun's fiancé. At that time, because Song Yun's parents did not approve of the marriage, only a few close friends knew about our marriage, and the outside world did not yet know that Song Yun was married. When I clicked on the video, it showed Song Yun and Lin Wanchou sitting together for an interview. They looked so good together, 
and the comments were all wishing them 99,999 blessings. I couldn't bear to watch any more, so I turned off my phone. My nerves were jumping, as if countless silver needles were being stuck into my brain. In the throes of unbearable pain, I knocked over the good chicken soup. The soup spilled on my arm, immediately turning it red, but this was less than one ten-thousandth of the pain in my heart. This news really attracted the interest of most people, and the hot search for Song's broken capital chain dropped quite a bit. I wiped the soup that had spilled on the floor clean, and then I heard a knock on the door. When I opened the door, it was Song Yun's parents. They walked straight into the house and took out a contract and a bank card. Song's mother glared at me and said, I've always said you'd drag him down, and now you see it's come true. Seeing that I didn't reply, she continued, Hurry up and sign the contract before it's too late. Seeing that I wouldn't be bullied, Song's mother changed her tone, Shang Shang. I've seen the affection you've had for Yun for so many years. But the Song family is facing a financial crisis, and we can only rely on the Lin family to preserve the achievements Yun has made over the years. I felt sick at hearing that, but I couldn't deny the fact that only the Lin family could save songs. I knew what Song Yun had done for the group over the years. I didn't know how much alcohol he had consumed in order to close a deal. He was also a non-smoker when he started, but now he secretly lights up late at night. If I insist on staying by his side, it will only hurt both of us, so divorce is the best decision. I signed the divorce agreement with every stroke of the pen. Song's mother was overjoyed and pushed the credit card on the table in front of me. I heard that your adoptive mother is sick and needs an operation. This amount of money should be enough. Just consider it a little gift from us. They had achieved their goal and left contentedly. I looked at the floor I had just mopped, and it was dirty again. Maybe it would have gotten dirty anyway, and it was only clean for a moment. I moved all my belongings, along with all my memories of him. Before leaving, I looked at the house we had lived in for four years. I contacted Lu Yi, my best friend from the orphanage, and asked him to help me find a place to live. A few days after moving in, I received a strange message. What does Yun usually like to eat? Hurry up and cook it and send it over. Below was an address. Song Yun is a workaholic and often forgets to eat when he is busy. Over time, he developed a stomach problem. After marrying him, I learned to cook various stomach-friendly meals to try to improve his stomach condition. In the blink of an eye, two or three years have passed, and his appetite has also been spoiled by me. After cooking the meal, I made an appointment with Lin Wanchio. After delivering the meal and walking out, I saw a car slowly pull up in front of the villa. Song Yun pulled over and got out of the car. He was wearing a simple white shirt, and his whole appearance was tall and straight, with a slender figure. He was simply the perfect clothes rack. After four years of marriage, he had always been gentle and considerate, with a smile in his eyes. I had forgotten that he also had such a cold and indifferent side. I suppressed the desire to rush over and hug him, and tried my best to act politely and distantly, Hello Mr. Song, I'm Su Sheng. Sheng Shenbushi's Sheng? He raised an eyebrow. Sheng as in Shanga Bujian swear and San lit, the sound of the flute, but no one to accompany it. I replied in a dull voice. He rubbed his forehead and looked at me with a cold expression, I do have amnesia, but I'm not stupid. You don't have to pretend that you don't know me. Miss Su, I know that you and I are only husband and wife in name, and I married you in the first place because I was angry with my fiancé. I got what I needed from you as compensation, so what are you doing here today? He said expressionlessly. I cursed in my heart. I'm here to bring you food, idiot. It's just that this Miss Su made me feel bad. I knew that all of this was arranged by Song's mother. Five years ago, Song Yun was still very respectful towards her mother. Any explanation I gave him now would be feeble and powerless. His slightly questioning tone made me panic, but fortunately Lin Wanchio arrived. Honey, you're back. It's been a hard day at work. Lin Wanchio gave me a glare before cooing and hugging Song Yun's arm. 
Song Yun obviously felt a little rejected and instinctively flinched to the side. Just as I let out a sigh of relief and prepared to leave, Song Yun spoke again, Miss Su, you still haven't answered. Lin Wanchio said, My sister is here to return something she borrowed before. Right. I was trying to think of what to return when I suddenly felt the ring on my right hand. I had to take it off and hand it to Song Yun. I'm here to return the wedding ring. Song Yun's face was a little displeased. As if to say you originally wanted to distance yourself from the relationship so much. I lowered my head and didn't dare to look at Song Yun. A knuckled hand took the ring from my palm and threw it in the nearby flower bed. Miss Su in the future just throw things like this away, there's no need to return them, the man replied with a cold face. He turned around and returned home with Lin Wanchio. The moment he turned around, I felt a salty taste in my mouth. I quickly took out the paper in my bag and covered my mouth. When I took it away, the scarlet blood on it stung my eyes and made them ache. Song Yun and I polished this together. Back then, Song Yun was willing to do everything himself, even designing and polishing the wedding ring himself. I volunteered to do it with him, but halfway through the machine broke down and I cut my wrist, requiring five stitches. When the matching rings were ready, Song Yun kissed my hand and said tenderly, Shang Shang, I will never take them off. But today, not only did he take off his own ring, he also threw mine on the ground. In the past few days, Chu Shi has been urging me to go for radiotherapy. I know that after radiotherapy, I will lose a lot of hair and gradually lose weight. So before going for radiotherapy, I am going to the mall to buy some nice clothes and find a makeup artist to do my makeup. Finally, I will go take a photo to stick on the little box that belongs to me. The mall is not very crowded on weekdays. I wander aimlessly through the floors of the mall and finally find the white dress I like in a closet. I walked into the shop and the salesperson enthusiastically introduced it to me. Beauty, you have a great eye. This is the last one in the series. Shall I wrap it up for you? I was about to nod when I heard a sweet voice. Yun, I really like this dress. Let's buy it. Her finger was pointing at the long white dress in my hands. I have already given up my husband to you. And now you don't even want to let go of a dress. I didn't want to hold back anymore. So I let the salesperson tell me the price and paid immediately. By the time Lin Wanchio walked in, I already had the wrapped dress in my hands. Lin Wanchio pretended to greet me, sister. I didn't expect to run into you here. I also like this dress, can I have it? I glanced at Song Yun, who didn't seem to want to stop me, perhaps tacitly approving of Lin Wanchio's actions. I paid no attention and walked straight out the door. Along the way, I didn't dare to look back, for if I did, I was afraid I wouldn't be able to come back. As I got out of the elevator and was about to take out the key to my door, I saw Song Yun leaning against the wall next to my door. I subconsciously wanted to avoid her, but I heard Song Yun laugh. Why are you afraid? I was afraid that I would be reluctant to let you go. I took a deep breath and my mouth curved up. It's not good for President Song to come to his ex-wife instead of his fiancée. After saying this, I turned the door lock and opened the door. As I was about to close the door, I saw Song Yun use her arm to block the door from closing. Because she had used a lot of strength, Song Yun couldn't help but let out a small grunt of pain. Then she looked at me with a slightly aggressive expression and said, Su Shang, are you trying to murder your husband? Ex-husband, I corrected. He gave me a cold glare and walked straight into the house. I brought the first aid kit to prepare to treat his wound. I live in a small one-bedroom apartment, and Song Yun looked very constrained when he came in, and there were some places where he even had to bow his head. I had just prepared the iodine and cotton swabs for disinfection when I saw Song Yun take off his jacket and unbutton his shirt. Although I had seen Song Yun's body many times, this was different from the past, and I covered my eyes with my hands, Song Yun, what are you doing? He smiled lightly and pursed his lips. How can I apply medicine without taking off my clothes? Besides, we're an old married couple. What's there to be shy about? We're a couple in name only, and you're really a forgetful person, Song, I retorted. He knew he was being unreasonable, 
so he didn't say anything else. I applied the medicine to his wound and looked at the several fresh scars on his back. My headache was getting worse. I muttered, even an adult can get stuck in a door, so he must be talented. Song Yun turned his head and said, Who are you calling talented? At that moment, I was pouting and blowing on the wound that I had just applied iodophore to. As soon as he turned his head, our lips met. I immediately moved back, but Song Yun's hand already blocked my way, and then my head was pushed towards him by his hand. His kiss came down on me like a blanket, and I used my hand to push him away. The next second, my hands were tightly wrapped in warm and powerful hands. I tried to struggle, but they were gripped even more firmly. The smell of the green pine after the snow instantly wrapped me up, and I fell into Song Yun's familiar embrace. The next morning, when Song Yun got up, I had already prepared breakfast. He put his arms around me from behind and said, Su Sheng, why does everything feel so familiar? Even this breakfast feels like I've had it before. I pulled away from him and replied coldly, You're imagining things. I'm making this for my boyfriend, and he'll be here in a moment. His smile vanished instantly, and he pulled the corners of his lips up in a cold, low voice, Su Sheng, you've got some nerve. He then picked up his jacket and slammed the door behind him. I looked at his angry back, and suddenly my eyes welled up. Song Yun, you have to take care of yourself, and don't come looking for me again. In the afternoon, I received a message from Lin Wanchio, saying that there was something he wanted to discuss with me face to face, and he sent me an electronic invitation. It was a banquet, scheduled for the evening two days later. What could Lin Wanchio possibly want to discuss with me? Maybe he wanted me to see her with Song Yun, to make me sick. I went anyway. The banquet was resplendent with lights, socialites and powerful people moving to elegant music, glasses clinking, and the guests in high spirits. Song Yun was easy to find. Over the past four years, I have mastered the skill of spotting him in a crowd at a glance. He was wearing a dark suit with a crisp crease, paired with a simple white shirt. He exuded a carefree and noble air. The woman next to him was holding his arm. She was wearing a burgundy long dress with a well-cut silhouette, her hair neatly coiffed in earrings that gave off a faint blue glow. She had an air of stunning luxury about her. I, on the other hand, was standing at the very edge of the crowd, wearing a white mid-length dress that was barely a dress, and a simple white rose brooch. I looked out of place. Lin Wancho greeted me as if it were a coincidence. Shang Shang, you're here too. Why are you dressed like that? She looked at me with contempt. If I knew you were coming, Yun and I would have prepared a dress for you in advance. Don't trouble yourself, Miss Lin. I'll be leaving soon. I felt a little uncomfortable and wanted to end this pointless conversation quickly. After saying that, I planned to go out, but after taking a few steps, I heard Lin Wancho's voice, Yun, where are you going? I knew that Song Yun had followed me, and I couldn't help but quicken my pace. I had just finished radiotherapy this morning, and my body was still weak. Such movement was almost life-threatening for me. When I reached the door I felt my legs give way, and I was luckily caught by a man with a sharp face. He helped me to a room in the hotel. I wanted to scream for help, but I couldn't make a sound because of the blood in my mouth. I wanted to shout for Song Yun to save me, but the moment I was pushed into the room, Song Yun had already turned away with a face full of anger. Am I going to be dragged into darkness again? The man in front of me was getting closer and closer, and he even laughed. Luckily I had the photos that Miss Lin gave me, otherwise I really wouldn't have been able to catch him. It's Lin Wanchio again, why is he always so aggressive? Not even sparing a dying person. My stomach instantly churned, and then mouthful after mouthful of blood flowed from my mouth. The bright red blood stained my snow-white dress, looking eerie and creepy. I vomited blood, laughing and crying at the same time. The man was obviously stunned and ran out of the room in a panic. I laughed. How could I have been so stupid as to fall into Lin Wancho's trap? I laughed. I was surprised that my terrifying illness had actually saved me. I cried. Song Yun no longer believed in me. I cried. 
I couldn't go to Bay Huai to see Song Yun plant roses for me. The physical and mental pain overwhelmed my last vestiges of consciousness. Before I fainted, I sent a message to Chu Shi, asking her to collect my body for me. Fortunately, the King of Hell did not collect me, and I was able to eke out a meager existence. Unfortunately, my brain cancer had already metastasized to many parts of my body. It has now developed into bone cancer. Chushi was crying bitterly as she lay by my bedside. I smiled reassuringly and said, Am I not super cool? When I arrive at the King of Hell's palace, if someone asks me how I died, I'll say I had two types of cancer and I don't know how I died. She complained to me, I told you to actively seek treatment a long time ago, but you just wouldn't listen. Now what are we going to do? She she, I don't want to seek treatment anymore. It's not going to work anyway. Let me leave happily. I want to go to Bay Huai after seeing the Dean and return to the place where I was born. I said with a choked voice, return to the place where Song Yun loves me the most. Chu Shi helped me with the discharge procedures, and coincidentally, Song Yun came to the hospital for a follow-up examination. The moment our eyes met, he quickly averted his gaze looking disdainful, as if looking at me one more time would dirty his eyes. As we passed each other, Song Yun's voice was cold. What? Pregnant already? The implication was that I was leading an unseemly life. Chu Shi wanted to argue, but I patted her hand to indicate that she should not explain. At least this way I could leave peacefully. After Chu Shi left, I called the matriarch and told her I would go back to see her the next day. The matriarch was very happy. I didn't tell her I was sick, for fear that she would be sad if she knew. Before hanging up, she told me, Shang Shang, we have to look forward. If you're not happy, just come home. I'll always be here. Song Yun and Lin Wanchou's affair had caused a storm in the city, and the matriarch must have heard about it. But she was afraid of hurting me, so she never asked any questions. As soon as I hung up, Louis called. His voice was hoarse and he looked like he had just cried. I heard you're going to see the dean tomorrow. Can I go with you? Chu Shi must have told Louis about my illness, and I had no need to hide it anymore. That's good. We haven't had a proper reunion since you returned to China, and I don't know when we'll see each other again. A bitter feeling came over me. Su Shang, don't say silly things. I'll pick you up at 9 a.m. tomorrow. After saying this, Lu Yi hung up the phone. In my short life, there were not many people I could confide in. Chu Shi, Lu Yi, Dean Mama, and my ex-husband. Song Yun. Before leaving, I also met with him to say goodbye. That day I had a dream. I went to Bay Huai, where there was a whole field of roses. The golden soil was covered with white roses in full bloom. Next to the field was a small two-story house, connected by a gravel path. The sunset was intoxicating, and the light from the setting sun shone on a couple leaning together on the second-floor balcony. I curiously approached, wanting to catch a glimpse of their faces. The two turned their heads, and it turned out that they were old acquaintances. After a good night's sleep, I woke up in the morning to find the sky already turning pale. I stretched and got out of bed to wash up. I don't usually wear makeup, but as I looked in the mirror and saw my own skeleton-like face gradually emerging and my cheekbones becoming more prominent, I lightly put on some makeup anyway. Louis had already been waiting for me downstairs. When we arrived at the Welfare Institute, we found five or six black business cars parked in front of the door. Thinking that something was wrong, I took Lu Yi's hand and hurried over. As soon as I arrived at the door, I felt a sharp pain in my joints. Fortunately, Lu Yi held me up, and I was about to say thank. Before I could say the last word of thanks, I saw Song Yun and Lin Wanchio next to him. Song Yun tilted his head and looked over. His face changed instantly, and it was very ugly. His eyes fixed firmly on Lu Yi and he spoke coldly, Ms. Su is quite popular. He deliberately lengthened the tone, extremely mischievous. The director's mother came over and took me by the hand, saying, Shang Shang, Mr. Song always comes to the orphanage to do charity work. She turned around and pointed at the pile of cardboard boxes behind her, and he brings the children lots of presents. I looked at him contemptuously and said, 
Thank you, Mr. Song, for your concern. His face turned even more unpleasant, and his eyes were cold. I didn't even glance at Song Yun again, and together with Lu Yi, we distributed the things we had brought to the children. The children were all very polite. A few little girls came up to us and asked curiously, Sister, is this brother your boyfriend? Lu Yi has fair skin and slight baby fat, giving him an amiable and warm feeling. The children all liked him very much. I wanted to say no, but when I saw Song Yun to my right, I nodded, yes. Lu Yi couldn't help but blush, and with a puzzled look, he turned to look at me. I pointed in the direction of Song Yun, and Lu Yi instantly understood. Then he reached out and put his arm around my shoulders, beaming, when we get married, I'll give you some wedding candy. The kids were happy and spinning in circles, wedding candy, wedding candy. Next to us, there was the sound of a cardboard box tearing open. Song Yun stood up and kicked the box aside. This box is expired, throw it away. The assistant next to him picked up the box and looked at it, muttering, isn't this not expired? I gave the director mother all my savings from the past few years, along with the compensation from my divorce, and told her that I was going abroad for a while and to take care of herself. She refused to accept it, and I lied to her, saying that it was the money from the divorce and I felt uncomfortable taking it. Only then did she accept it. After that time apart at the Welfare Institute, there were always strange numbers adding me on WeChat. I guessed it must be Song Yoon, so I rejected them all. In the end, he was forced to do it, and had to say in his application that he was an employee of the Welfare Institute and wanted to ask something. I thought that if I continued like this, he would keep pestering me and even come back to find me, so I might as well just say a decisive goodbye. I approved his application. I pulled out the wedding photos I took with him in Beihuai from my phone, cropped out most of his side, leaving just his hands and cuffs. Then I posted a circle of friends' message. Next stop, Beihuai, the place where we fell in love. I set it to only be visible to him. Sure enough, he saw it and commented below, that's ugly. I was both angry and amused when I read it. He had forgotten Bei Huai and our encounter, so he might as well forget me too. That evening I received a WeChat message from him. I'm Song Yun, there's something I want to talk to you about. I didn't reply because there was no need. I was going to Bei Huai the next day. In the morning I saw that he had sent another dozen messages, the last one being, Su Sheng, why didn't you reply to my messages? I sent him a message. I did reply. It was sent to a different number, and it had been there for more than a day. He asked again, what do you mean? The blacklisting service that an ex-spouse is supposed to have provided me with was a one-stop service that arranged everything for my ex-husband. Without Song Yun's interference, my life finally returned to peace. After calculating the date of my departure for Bei Huai and liaising with the nursing home there, I set off on my journey home. Before I left, I had the recipe book I had written earlier delivered to Chu Shi. I heard that Song Yun was getting married the following week, so this recipe book is my wedding gift to them. I boarded the train to Bei Huai with a very different frame of mind. When I left, it was clear that there were two of us, but when I returned, there was only one. No, there was half a person. I thought the journey would be quick, but I forgot that I was a patient, a very sick one. During the ten-hour journey, I vomited five or six times, and my throat was so sore that I had to fetch water for myself. The seat next to me was occupied by an enthusiastic auntie, who kept an eye on me and chatted with me as she saw that I was alone. Little girl, are you married yet? The auntie asked enthusiastically. Yes, I said, looking down at the ring mark on my ring finger. She looked worried. How come your husband is so confident in letting you come here alone? I smiled. He's a busy man. Busy preparing for the wedding. Busy handing out wedding invitations. Busy marrying his fiancée. In the end, I finally made it to Bei Huai and didn't die on the way. I was very comfortable living in the nursing home in Bei Huai. The temperature and climate were very suitable, and my roses really liked it here. Painkillers became a necessity for me. After taking the medicine, I lay in the rocking chair on the balcony and fell asleep slowly. 
One day at noon, I received a call from Chu Shi, who told me that Song Yun had gotten married. I looked at the roses by the window, not crying or smiling, just my eyelids getting heavy and unable to lift. In a daze, I seemed to see the rose field, and I knew it was an old friend coming to pick me up. A voice called out to me, when lovers part, the rose petals scatter, and the joy of a long life is hard to find again. Chu she seemed to say something else, but I was too sleepy to hear it. In the empty sanctuary, white flowers and a romantic atmosphere filled with love filled the air, and the beautiful wedding music echoed through the wedding hall. Song Yun was waiting outside the door to greet the guests and saw Chu Shi. She coldly placed the gift on the table and turned to say, Su Shang's wedding gift to you, wishing your relationship endless. Song Yun felt a sense of panic, as if something important had been lost and could never be recovered. He trembled as he unwrapped the gift, which was a thick notebook with yellowed pages. He opened the first page and froze. It contained a neatly handwritten line a Yun stomach-friendly guide with a few playful stick figures next to it. His formerly upright posture looked a little stooped at this moment. She used to call him a Yun, not Mr. Song. She used to cook for Yun, not Mr. Song. She used to be Yun's wife, but Mr. Song lost Yun, and she is no longer Yun's wife. Song Yun canceled the marriage and went to find his Shang Shang, but he didn't know at the time that his Shang Shang would never return. He went to Su Shang's home, but there was no sign of Su Shang. After he eloped, the Lin family withdrew their investment. However, Song Yun's abilities from the past five years were still there, and he filled the gap in less than half a month, allowing the group to run smoothly. After finishing up with the company, he went to many places with no results. He had to go to Lu Yi, and he followed Lu Yi for several days, but still didn't see Su Shang. Slowly, he noticed that Lu Yi would go to the cemetery every week, and he would bring a bunch of white roses. He remembered the white roses in the vase at Su Shang's house, and the white rose brooch she wore at the banquet that day. He had a bad feeling that his Shang Shang might be there. After Lu Yi left, he slowly walked up to the stone tablet. It was engraved, the grave of my dear friend Su Shang, aged 28, erected by his good friend Chu Shi Lu Yi. He remembered that last time he saw Su Shang in the hospital, she looked very pale and thin. He knew that the only way to find out what had happened was to ask himself and Shang Shang's Yun. He went to the Public Security Bureau and retrieved the files and sealed items from the car accident that day. Among the sealed items he saw a box. Although the exterior was damaged beyond recognition, he could still see the exquisite craftsmanship. He opened the box and a necklace of white roses encrusted with diamonds came into view. As soon as his eyes fell upon it, his head ached terribly, and it took a long time for the pain to gradually subside. He remembered. He remembered that it was their wedding anniversary that day. He remembered that this necklace was the anniversary gift that he had carefully prepared. He remembered their encounter in Bei Huai. He remembered that he had proposed with 99 roses and he remembered his beloved wife, who had been by his side for four years. He held back his inner grief and picked up the mobile phone in the storage bag. The screen of the phone was broken, and it could not be turned on even if it was out of power. He removed the sealed items and returned home with a tired face. He replaced the screen of the phone and got a new charger. After turning on the phone, he saw that someone had sent him several dozen messages on WeChat. It was his Shang Shang. He clicked on the dialogue box. The details he had ignored, the blood and tears hidden in the dark, the pain she had swallowed alone, one after another green dialogue boxes, quietly weaving a sharp net that cut his heart to pieces. June 06. A Yun had a car accident and forgot everything about him and me over the past five years. It was really bad luck, and I was diagnosed with brain cancer. Chu Shi persuaded me to go for treatment. I didn't want to. I didn't like the cold walls of the hospital, the lingering smell of disinfectant, and the dull, sad atmosphere. A Yun wasn't around either. No one was with me. I want to tell Yun everything that has happened in the past five years, but I don't know how to start. 
My illness is incurable, and Yoon will only be made to suffer more if she remembers. I'd better not tell him. June 7. Yun's company is in trouble, and there's nothing I can do to help except worry. Luckily, Lin Wanchio has returned and helped him solve the problem. Although the problem is solved, I'm not happy. Today, Song's mother came to see me and asked me to sign the divorce agreement. I didn't want to sign, but if I didn't, the problems with Erong's company would never be solved. So I signed, and I hope that makes Erong happy. June 20th. I've moved to a new place. It's small, but it's a relief. Lin Wanchio asked me what Arong likes to eat. I'm the only one who knows Arong's tastes, and over the years I've written down the recipes in the stomach-friendly cookbook I had customized for Arong. I was afraid she wouldn't be able to make them, so I gave her the cookbook. When I saw Yun outside, I wanted to hug her, but I was stupid, and I returned Yun's wedding ring and mine. Yun threw mine away. That's fine, Yun. It's time for you to start a new life. Let me be alone in my memories and suffer. June 25, th. Went shopping and bought a white dress. In fact, I only liked the white rose brooch on the dress. That was the token of our love. When I got home, Yoon followed me and I even hurt him. I put medicine on his wound and he kissed me and, forget it, let me indulge myself just once. June 28, th. I broke my promise. I went to the banquet and saw Yoon. Yoon and Lin Wanchio make a great couple. It's true. When I left tonight, I was dragged away by the man Lin Wanchio had arranged for me. Yoon didn't come to save me, I was so sad. July 1 SD. The hospital really isn't a good place. Every time I come here, they tell me bad news. I've been diagnosed with bone cancer again. I saw Yoon when I was discharged from the hospital and he seemed to dislike me even more. Never mind, I forgive you. Anyway, I'm leaving soon. July 5, th. My bones hurt so much it feels like they're going to crack. I really want to be in Yun's arms, and hear him soothe me. July 7, th. I had a dream, a dream of a field of roses in Bay Huai. But my Yun probably won't go there anymore. A strange thought suddenly occurred to me. I want to scatter my ashes in the desert of Bay Huai after I die, and if I'm lucky, I'll be lying in a rose garden. July 8 th. I watched Mama Director and Yoon together with Lu E. Louie was so naughty that he even made Yoon angry. Don't blame me, Yoon. Just consider this your punishment for forgetting me. July 10 th. I've completely lost sleep. The pain throughout the day and night makes it impossible for me to sleep. I have to take painkillers. July 12 th. Chushi and Lu E always come to visit me, I'm so happy. But every time they go back, they tell me, take care of yourself. What's going on? I'm a little scared. July 20th of the year. A soon kept bothering me, and I didn't want to reply, but I was afraid that he would come looking for me. Seeing my current pale face, emaciated cheeks, and unwearable dark circles under my eyes. I agreed to his application and posted a friend circle just for him. He doesn't remember our wedding photo anymore, and he just fell into my trap. Asun, I'm not the one who said you're ugly. On 25 July 2017, I went to Bay Huai. Before I left, I entrusted Yoon with the recipe book I had treasured for many years. On 7 August 2017, I asked many people at the nursing home if there were any rose fields nearby. They all said they had never heard of any. I looked at the roses on the windowsill and for a moment I felt a little downhearted. A Yoon, seeing your face in words, reading the letter lifts my spirits. The balcony door is open and the greenery outside the window has crept up to my windowsill. The sunlight is just right, so I'll write to you here. You may be wondering why I've changed the way I write. You're so clever, I don't need to tell you. Never mind, let's not talk about such sad topics. I heard you're getting married tomorrow, so please forgive me for not being able to send you my blessings. Due to my illness, I can't think of many things anymore, and now you don't remember either, which is quite good. The white roses by the window have already withered a bit, and after I finish replying to your message, I'll go to the corner to buy a bouquet. Life comes and goes as usual. 
please do not feel sad about my departure. I originally had half a year to live, but I have shortened it to two months. I think it is because the rose fields somewhere have bloomed, so I want to go and see them. So I will stop writing here. May my Ayun be blessed with good fortune and happiness in everything. P. S. Don't blame me for using your WeChat as a tree hole. You forgot about me. Postscript. After Song Yun regained her memory, she seemed to have changed and became even colder. Within three months, she had swallowed up the Lin group. Lin Wanqiu found Song Yun and accused her, Song Yun, why did you do this? Song Yun's forehead veins pulsed slightly, for my late wife. What? She died. Lin Wanqiu didn't dare say more. Soon after, the Lin family father and daughter went overseas. After Lin's bankruptcy, Song Yun seemed to have lost the goal of living and spent the whole day locked up in her home. When Song's parents came looking for her, they found Song Yun drunk as a skunk. Song's mother quickly hugged her son and cried, Xiao Yun, don't scare me what's wrong. Su Shang is gone. Song's mother obviously didn't know about this gone. Where? Song Yun's eyes were dark, she's sick. What kind of illness? Brain cancer and bone cancer. Song Yun's parents fell silent. How much pain must she have felt when she signed the divorce agreement? She must have been in a lot of pain when she found out that I was engaged to Lin Wanqiu. Song Yun's mother didn't know how to respond. Tell me, what was she thinking before she left? Song Yun suddenly stood up and threw everything on the table onto the floor. A rose brooch fell to the ground. Song Yun ignored the broken glass and knelt directly on the floor, holding the brooch in her hands, trembling and saying, She must have wanted to go see the rose fields in Bei Huai. Song's mother asked carefully, What rose fields? Song Yun did not answer, but just started tidying up the house on her own. Song's father and mother also did not say anything and helped their son clean up. Dad, Mom, I'll leave the company in your hands. Leave it to us? What are you going to do? I'm going to Bei Huai to plant roses. Song Yun's eyes sparkled. Song's parents knew their son's temperament and didn't insist. When Song Yun arrived in Bei Huai, he went to the sanatorium first and looked at the room Su Shang had lived in. He sat in the rocking chair Su Shang had slept in and felt more at ease than ever. He bought a plot of land nearby and started planting roses. During the day he planted roses, and at night he came to the sanatorium to sleep. When it wasn't the flowering season for the roses, he started working as a tour guide on the streets of Bei Huai. One day a child asked him, Uncle, why are you planting these flowers? He smiled and said, because my wife likes them. Then your wife must be very happy. He said, exhaling slowly into the flower field. Yes, she loved it when the roses bloomed and we could look at the sea of flowers together. But the flowers bloomed season after season and she never came. The people in the nursing home passed away generation after generation. His flower field became smaller and smaller. Eventually, he could no longer walk far, so he could only plant roses in the courtyard in front of the window. The weather forecast said that there would be a fire wind blowing across the western part of Bei Huai in three days. The western part was uninhabited, and the county magistrate only advised people not to go out in the next few days. But Song Yun went out holding a bunch of white roses. He wore a suit that he had worn when he got married many years ago. He drove his car to the western part of Bei Huai. He smiled and walked towards the fire wind. Sheng Sheng, I have come to see you. My old acquaintance. 